Hey guys, Claire here, and in today's video, we're going to talk about all things Harry and Meghan. Well, not just Harry and Meghan. We're also going to touch on the latest PR blunders of Kensington Palace. Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan are safely back in Montecito. Someone at the airport shared a video of Harry and Meghan on their way home from Texas. In the last video, we talked about Meghan's participation in the South by Southwest panel with Katie Couric, Brooke Shields, and some other phenomenal women. And from the consensus of the comment section, it appears that we all all enjoyed the panel and wished it was a little bit longer. It, it went by way too quickly. Megan took some time after the panel to meet with some fans, take some photos, sign a little suits memorabilia, and then we saw that Harry and Megan went to a barbecue joint. Now, in the last video, I briefly touched on that, but I didn't even realize that it was a female-owned barbecue restaurant, which that's very Megan for you. She was there on International Women's Day, participating in that panel with other spectacular women, and of course, supporting a female-owned business. We saw Harry and Megan interacting with the members of the Welcome Project, and then, we saw Harry and Meghan with the families of the Uvalde shooting. Now, we know Meghan's long history with showing support and love for the family members of the victims. She was there soon after the shooting occurred. Remember, she volunteered. Um, some of the family members has consistently shared on social media that Meghan behind the scenes have been keeping in touch with them you know, offering support, offering assistance, seeing how they're doing. So this trip was unsurprising. If it's one thing we've seen from Harry and Meghan, if ever they're in a location, they try to do as much as they possibly can, meet as many people. So this is not surprising. Those photos and the videos of them, I can't be the only one who thinks Harry and Meghan looked so they looked like they belonged there. They looked like a nice little couple that lives a couple of houses down the road that's coming over for the backyard barbecue. Like that's the vibe that I get from Harry and Meghan. They don't look pretentious or out of place. They just look cordial and warm. But they also took the time to meet with other family members of victims of Uvalde. Remember, Archwell, in collaboration with Kaboom and the city of Uvalde, had come together to create a nice little playground for the children. So all in all, I'll say the trip to Texas was a massive success. Well, look, the family simply said that it was a beautiful visit. And I do just want to start with Irma Garcia, this is a teacher, someone who'd been a teacher for 23 years and was one of the two teachers and 19 students that day at Robb Elementary. And unfortunately, her husband also died just two days later of a heart attack. So, of course, this is a family that had gone through a lot. And this family also says that they've received the support of Harry and Meghan since the shooting, that they have been in touch. And this time around, uh, Irma's nephew, his name is John Martinez, he told CNN that his mom received a call from Megan saying that she was coming to visit. This is after she spoke at South by Southwest in Austin. Um, and she brought a cake for Irma's sister, Claudia Martinez. They sang happy birthday together. But the most important thing here is that the family said that Harry and Megan spent quite a bit of time speaking to Irma and Joe Garcia's kids. Um, talking to them about the future, talking to them about their plans and what they want to do. And they said they spoke to them at length. So again, this was the whole family coming together with Harry and Meghan, and it was very special for them. John Martinez also saying that not only was it beautiful, but he said that these were very nice and compassionate people. He described them as being humble and down to earth during this visit. And it's not the first time that Megan visits um, with this family. They had been down to Uvalde right after the shooting and a spokesperson for Megan at the time had said that she had done this in a personal capacity as a mother to offer her support and to offer um, her condolences. And it's really support that this family and all of the families of the victims need right now. Now onto the train wreck of what's going on with Kensington Palace. I don't know. It just sort of feels like someone within the palace wakes up 
and decides, you know what, what can we do to add fuel to the fire of conspiracy surrounding Kate and her recovery? <laughs> because the PR for Kensington Palace has just been consistently off. Please say that Laura is here with me now. Now, Laura, of course, there is the photograph. What do we understand is happening by these photo agencies, these news agencies with it? This is all really strange and, you know, happening as we speak. But let me explain what we do know. We have some uh, respected international news agencies deciding to kill this photo. In other words, they are pulling it from their distribution websites because they believe it has been changed, altered, Photoshop, call it what you like. They don't believe this is the photo in its original form. Now, Associated Press has, has, is among those who've decided to, to kill this photo, to pull it. they saying at closer inspection, it appears that the source has manipulated the image. Now, remember, the source of this photo, we were told by Kensington Palace, was Prince William himself. He took this photo uh, in Windsor last week. He is behind it. Now, we don't know what manipulation of the image actually means, so we don't know how much of this image isn't its original form. Is it a filter? Are there tweaks? We, we just simply don't know. What we do know is that Kensington Palace have declined to comment about this, and it just makes it all the more bizarre. And in terms of the speculation around this photo, it is only going to fuel the fires, I think, of those conspiracy I don't think any of us expected or anticipated a photo from Mother's Day from Kensington Palace or from Kate and William. Some people say that perhaps this was put out there because Harry and Meghan are getting good press in Texas. I don't know. I mean, it has been a pattern where if Harry and Meghan are out and about and they're getting good press, either William or Catherine or they'll collectively show out and do something to sort of garner some good press as well. So it could be that, or it could be they're just trying to add <laughs> a photo of Kate on Mother's Day. Just holding themselves. You know, manipulation from the royal family on the photograph is not new. This is a new form of manipulation by changing the photograph itself. But let's remember that there's been a, a ban effectively on, uh, on news agencies and, and photographers picking up pictures of the royal family's children, but they're very happy to release pictures themselves. So, in fact, what they've been doing over decades now has been using the press, the press, the media, as a kind of free PR agency to put out the pictures that they want the public to see, while of making sure that the pictures they don't want them to see are hidden. This is unprecedented, isn't it, for three news agencies, photo agencies, to withdraw these photos? Yeah, and I think this is a PR disaster, as it stands, for the palace, because it started off yesterday morning with a lovely photo released of Catherine with the three children to mark Mother's Day. It was designed, clearly, to try and silence the conspiracy theorists whose voices have been growing ever louder over recent weeks. Instead, it's fueled them and thrust them into the mainstream. And just look at the Telegraph front page, normally so supportive uh, of the royal family. And their headline, photo from Palace was doctored say agencies, four agencies, highly respected. Four, not three. Four now. Four. Uh, highly respected picture agencies, news agencies have issued kill notices uh, to clients to pull the image from their website. Now, what I find interesting, the fact that international media, well, four bodies of authority in the international media said, mm, no. Because this is not the first time the royal family has put out photos that have been photoshopped. That happens regularly. I don't know what's going on there, but whatever is going on behind the scenes, whatever that we don't know, it's not good. There is a firestorm of conspiracy theories all over social media. And you even see people in the press sort of saying, hmm, what, what's going on there? Because it's not, the math is not mathing. You have Chris Ship of ITV, who is very pro palace, even asking some questions that mirrors the questions of people on social media. The background looks a little too green to be that time of the year. I've seen posts from people on Twitter who live very close to where this photo is alleged to have been taken, saying, yeah. 
that that green is a little is too green. <laughs> That's not how the plants are over here. So that photo is not current. There was someone on TikTok who even did a deep dive into tracking the clothes that the children and Kate were wearing to um, things that were done, I believe, in November of last year. <laughs> it's insane. I know by now we all know that this photo has probably been photoshopped to hell and back, but I've been doing some research and I really believe that this photo was taken back in November of 2023 or some version of this photo. And if you don't believe me that this photo is really photoshopped or fake or whatever, then look no further than this notice from AP that they sent out telling people not to publish it because there was evidence that it had been manipulated. I'm not gonna waste your time pointing out all the different evidence of Photoshop. It's all over Twitter, just go look. Instead, I'm gonna say, let's take a really good look at these outfits. Okay, so in November, Kate and her kids went to a baby bank and put together a charity video that dropped in December. And if you know anything about Kate Middleton, you know that people obsessively track her fashion. So of course I was able to find a bunch of blogs breaking down exactly what she was wearing. Now, yeah, I know that the sweater in her picture was black, but stick with me because it's Photoshopped. I think they changed around the clothes on the photo, but Look at these boots and look at the pants. This is the exact sweater. It's from a company called Rice, I believe. And look at that neckline and look at this part right here. I've upped the exposure quite a lot so that you can see the ribbing better, but look how it lands on her like thigh area, the thickness of that belt of the ribbing, and then look at the turtleneck. Yes, I know a lot of turtlenecks look the same, but I do believe that this was photoshopped to be darker and it was just that cream sweater because they don't make it in another color. They make it in cream and in camel. Now let's look at the boots that she's wearing in this new photo. It's the same exact boots as this baby bank visit that she did with her kids. Let's talk about the little girl and what she's wearing. Look at the neckline on this sweater in this photo. And here she is in a very similar neckline on the same day from the baby bank. And you can see it even better here in the fashion blog from December where they were breaking down what everybody was wearing in this video. It's a very specific neckline. I mean, take a look. It looks like they just added another sweater on top of this. But it doesn't stop there because take a look at the shoes that her daughter was wearing that day. These are the same exact shoes and probably the same tights, but it's hard to tell because the photos are a little bit saturated and I can't see the ribbing in the original one. But it's definitely the same shoes. Now the older kid was wearing this navy sweater and plaid shirt underneath at the baby bank. But it kind of looks to me in this photo like that's the same sweater. They just made it a little bit lighter and then they didn't want you to notice the checkered collar. So they covered it with blue. Unfortunately, I really could not get a clear shot of the pants and shoes of the little boy, so I didn't bother to go into his much, but it's weird to me that Kate is wearing a sweater that looks suspiciously exactly like that cream sweater, except just happens to be darker, with the same exact shoes and the same exact kind of looking pants, and then her daughter's wearing the same exact sweater with the ruffled neck, with the same exact shoes and possibly the same tights. Now, yes, this skirt is different, but that is one of the most glaring Photoshop issues in this photo that a lot of people have noticed right here where the skirt juts out and it doesn't make any sense. So additionally, a lot of people noticed right here where they messed up the sleeve. So I'm kind of thinking that they probably took this photo the day of that event back in November when they filmed it. It didn't see the light of day until December, but I think they filmed it in November. But of course, they're not gonna release a picture that's supposed to be brand new with them all in the same outfits from a publicized event. So they just kind of tinkered it a little bit. I don't know. I'm sure a lot of you will call me crazy and I'm used to it, so. Go ahead. But they're definitely pulling the wool over your eyes with this one. Can't help myself, I've got to weigh in. Where the hell is Kate Middleton? As an Australian, I wouldn't speak for the entire Commonwealth, but your highnesses, you can hear the people as well as I can if you listen. Because while assorted royal mouthpieces are disparaging all speculation and assuring us that one highly dubious paparazzi photograph proves that all is well, the wife of the heir to the throne is taking several months off without warning and without so much as, in Kate Halfpenny's words, a phone snap of her in a dressing gown playing Uno with the kids. You would think that the 24-7 comforts of royal living and the 24-7 role of royal scions and those who consort with and produce them came with 24-7, well, no, what, at least monthly accountability. But no, apparently, Catherine has the right to say, I don't want them to see me at all for as long as I feel the need. Or else, Catherine is not able to say anything at the moment. I mean, wouldn't they at least prop her up on crisp white pillows, smiling bravely and sparking a fashion for lace bed jackets? 
I really can't see an in-between option here and I have increasingly grave concerns for her health. Now, before you say who cares, as many will, let me add, I am no great fan of Kate Middleton or the monarchy, but I'm also not just being kind, I'm watching fate and folly topple an empire. Technically, Kate's health is not a state issue, she's not in line to the throne, but in a monarchy already in crisis, weakened by the geopolitical schism between William and Harry, threatened by King Charles's cancer, where suddenly William seems unable to meet basic obligations, and now somehow it's being said that Camilla, of all people, has been holding the show together, to be down Princess Kate if she was so much as conscious is surely unthinkable. You know what I mean when I say I fear the worst, the vagueness of the narrative, the complete lack of foreshadowing to the original announcement, the indefinite extensions. There have been no confirmed sightings of Catherine since Christmas and her name's been removed from the list for the trooping of the color. That's in June. The silence and evasions from the palace, the absolute lack of any photographs whatsoever except that one grainy pap image that looks more like Kate's sister and mother on a grim visit. It all speaks of a palace taken unawares by some calamity, something they cannot spin. That's the worst part. Whatever's going on, the best PR departments in the Anglosphere can't figure out how to turn it to even modest advantage. What else might figure in the inevitable speculation about what's happened to Kate? Oh yes, the Wales's less than happy marriage and William's notorious temper. I won't speculate here about specific possibilities because they're all horrendous, but if the palace doesn't wheel out the princess soon, surely questions should be asked in the house. Of course, conservatives will claim she's a creature of exquisite refinement who lay on a pea and is terribly bruised. Leave her alone until she's pretty again. But that's not how a constitutional monarchy should operate if it wants to survive the political rough and tumble of the 21st century. Because this isn't just about Kate. It's about what happened to put her out of action indefinitely. It's about the ongoing appearance of deception and dysfunction, the statistical risks for women under patriarchy, no matter what their class, and whether something unacceptable is being covered up. Only those who would protect the monarchy at any cost could question our right to know. And I tell you what, if Kate really is just taking her time recuperating from abdominal surgery, I hope the rumor that she's in hiding to grow out bangs gave her a laugh fit to split her stitches. Absolutely, Jeremy, what a complete mess. And as you've just, you know, demonstrated over the last 10 minutes, this photo is going to be picked apart ad infinitum probably for the rest of this week. And actually, for me, there's two things here. One, this is a bit of a major comms disaster for Kensington Palace. You know, three major photo agencies pulling this picture, us all discussing it. But also, the more important thing is, can we ever trust anything that the palace can ever tell us again? If we can't even trust a photograph, how can we trust that what they're telling us, and don't forget these comms professionals are tax funded, you know, taxpayer funded, how can we ever trust what they, they tell us is, is true? I think to put this in the wider context, just to, to give a bit more of a kind of explanation, this goes back to actually Prince William. He is so protective of his family's privacy. He is so, he's just like Harry, actually. He just shows it in a different way. And it goes back to his mother and the experience of their childhood. And when he married Kate, he promised his dad that he would look after her. And that basically meant look after her from the press and the public. She goes into hospital. She has this operation. It's all kept, you know, none of us knew about it as it should be. Ipso code, article two, privacy, mental health and physical health are protected very, very strongly in the editor's um, code of conduct, which covers newspapers and television. And then obviously Kenston Palace announced that she's had this operation and that we're not going to see her until after Easter. And then they think, OK, great. But actually, it was, in my opinion, Prince William's decision to pull out of, if, if viewers might remember, he pulled out of a, a sort of royal slash family occasion. Mm. It was the uh, memorial service for his godfather, King Constantine. He pulled out that only citing a personal matter, wouldn't give any other information. He viewed it as totally private, so he wouldn't say what the problem was. And that set the hairs running on social media, commentators, everyone started saying, well, is it about Catherine? Is she okay? And of course, there was that difference between Kensington Palace and Buckingham Palace, how they dealt with the health of their two major principles. Charles, despite having treatment for cancer, is pictured looking at his Get Well cards, videos are released, pictures are released, nothing in comparison on Kate and the vacuum has been filled. Thank you very much, Emily Andrews. If it's one thing 
that I have consistently said, and I will stand by it when it comes to Kensington Palace and the way they handle PR blunders for William, is that they will always, always find somebody else to blame but William. So you're telling me from the palace, it was alleged that William took that photo about a week ago. So why did they release that statement or post saying that Kate took accountability for it and Kate apologizes for it? Personally, I don't think Kate had a damn thing to do with it. I think it was an old picture and they photoshopped it. I think that William and Kensington Palace were getting sick and tired of the conspiracy theories and each time they try to dispel it in their haste, they make it worse. I think William possibly told someone in the Kensington Palace PR group to fix it. So what do they do? <laughs> Take a photo that was old, mess with it a lot, very sloppily, and put it out in an attempt to make things better. It's so sloppy, which has been a consistent theme for Kensington Palace, right? And a lot of people have even said, hey, if you've read Spare, you could kind of see the patterns. It's a lot more obvious when you already have that seed planted in your head. And also people pointing out that part in the Netflix documentary where Harry talked about a statement being put out according to the palace from William and Harry. And Harry's like, they put it out saying that I was a part of it and I was not. They lied. That day, a story came out saying that part of the reason why Meghan and I were leaving uh, was because William had bullied us out. And once I got in the car after the meeting, I was told about a joint statement that had been put out in my name and my brother's name, squashing the story about him bullying us out of the family. A sign of public unity from the brothers, who issued a joint statement calling the report false, offensive, and potentially harmful. I couldn't believe it. No one had asked me. No one had asked me permission to put my name to a statement like that. So with all of the exposure surrounding how the palace deals with PR and interacts with the UK media, it's becoming apparent that Kensington Palace is, well, it's a mess. It's clearly being photoshopped. And um, there's also a step behind, a little white step just behind uh, on the left-hand side, which is not aligned as well. Is this just a really bad photoshop by some palace flunky or... I mean, the conspiracy theories have gone wild online. Does this suggest that all is not well? It certainly is a very bad Photoshop, but it's also a very bad series of PR errors by Kensington Palace. I mean, we had William pulling out of his godfather's uh, funeral, uh, saying it's a personal matter. We still haven't heard really what that is, although there's plenty of speculation about it. And now this. And I think that all you needed, really straightforwardly, to put all the internet rumours to bed were just, were just a very straightforward. We're told it's a sort of nice family snap. Well, it's not. It's been manipulated. It's been doctored. But why is the question? Yeah. You know, none of the things, apart from, I think this is a very legitimate question, about the rings. But everything else is sort of, well, well why? Why would you manipulate that? Why would you change that? And the, the I mean, reasoning some, behind yeah. it has to I mean, be some question. people are saying it's just... It's, I mean, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I, I, I mean, it's nearly always a very obvious explanation, which is usually incompetence. I think uh, the cock-up theory is nearly always the right one, isn't it, Sam? I mean, you work in politics, you know that is the case too. Um, but, you know, did they take a bunch of photos and in one of them, two of the kids isn't smiling, one of them, you know, and it's just, all right, well, let's just Photoshop in the nicest smiles from the kids so everyone looks happy for that nice photo. Personally, again, I, I, I don't really care. <laughs> I don't really care. Whatever is going on behind the scenes, I'm sure in time, members of the British press is going to trip, trip, trip it because that's how they operate. It's the photograph, but very strange that this has happened. Yes, it's extraordinary, isn't it? I had two feelings. One is there was a photograph captured of her with her mother in a car. And although yes. newspapers didn't use it, you yeah. could see what she looked like. She looked quite puffy-faced. And I wondered whether how yesterday, how she could change from this puffy face to the slim one we'd known so well. After you've had a major operation and you're not well enough to do very much, I don't so see that So is that's your right. fear that the photograph is not off the time and place? In other words, this photograph was taken some other time, maybe um, in the autumn 
I don't know when. Yes, I also think it was strange when they said that um, Prince William did it because he's not learnt how to be a photographer. And it Personally, I'm just glad that Harry and Meghan are not there. Harry and Meghan and their children are not there. Can you imagine if they were still working within the firm, still over there? They'll have Harry and Meghan out here working overtime while abusing them overtime. People in the palace would probably have demanded that Harry and Meghan put their children out here for public consumption so that they can be abused. But now they can't hide behind Harry and Meghan anymore. They can't hide behind Queen Elizabeth anymore. They have zero access to them and zero access to Archie and Lily, so they can't use them. And the cracks are showing. Perhaps this is just a glimpse of what the monarchy will look like under the ruling of William and Kate. Lazy and sloppy PR. Could you imagine if this was Meghan yeah. and her children and then oh it turned out that there had been some touches to the photo? Oh my I think God. that Piers Morgan's head would explode for one. <laughs> um, and I think some You'd be able to Twitter. hear it from wherever you were. Oh. Well, exactly. Uh, there would be areas of Twitter that will X or what you want to call it would, would completely implode. Uh and in a shocking turn of events within the past 24 hours, there are two articles from two different sources that I did not expect to see <laughs> in 2024. Firstly, an article from The Mirror, yes, The Mirror from the UK, that says Kate Middleton's photo controversy is proof that Meghan was right to get out of the picture. Hmm. So the author, Darren Lewis, says that every time Meghan sees the internet explode over Kate's health and state of her marriage, she must surely be thankful to have left the firm. Um, Darren, honey, you want to share something with the class? Because not only is he talking about Kate's health crisis, but the state of her marriage which I find to be quite interesting that the mirror allowed this article to be posted. We'll see if Kensington Palace makes a call and it disappears, <laughs> much like that article about Rose that was posted on the Tatler's Twitter. We'll see. Also, you know that your PR has fully messed up when Vogue Vogue of all magazines says that if the royal family was half as strategic as people are led to believe or as focused on preserving the crown, they would have tried to keep Harry and Meghan within the firm at all costs. Now, I do agree, but at this point, too little too late. Kensington Palace, you in danger, girl. Here's the thing about this Kate Middleton photo drama that is starting to really blow my mind. It started out as like a very silly internet conspiracy theory, has now turned into something that has the capacity to permanently damage the royal family. I've been working in media for about 10 years now, and it is a huge deal for the AP and other international news agencies to kill that photo of Kate and her kids. And what I find interesting about this is that we've reached the point where we've kind of like crossed the Rubicon on this, where there is no outcome in which this doesn't matter. Whether the outcome is highly dramatic in the form of like some sort of divorce or infidelity rumors, or is like very upsetting in the form of like some terrible medical diagnosis, or even if the outcome is like a very routine explanation, which is like she wanted to get Botox or she was on bed rest for whatever reason, there is no outcome where this doesn't matter. Because regardless of the outcome, what we are seeing for the umpteenth time with this royal family is that their PR team, their PR strategy is a disaster. Like they're moving through 2024 with Y2K levels of understanding about technology and PR strategy. And of course, this is hardly the first time that the royal family has been exposed for having terrible PR approaches. God knows they blundered the situation with Harry and Meghan. God knows that they have blundered situations with Prince Andrew, blundered every single step of Princess Diana's tenure in the royal family not to mention what happened after her death. But I think what's happening with Kate is like particularly damaging to the royal family because there isn't even an argument that people can latch onto in terms of like left versus right. Like with Meghan Markle, there was so much racism at the heart of the royal family's treatment of her that it then became a polarizing issue on the level of politics with like the far right defending racism and the far left obviously accusing the royal family of racism. And with Prince Andrew, so much of that was thrown under the rug. But with this, it's like, this is such 
such a failure of technology. It's such a failure of like bad AI edits, which is I guess a roundabout way of saying this is in all likelihood a non-controversy that turned into a controversy because of the royal family's utter inability to be even remotely modern. All they had to do was show a photo of her. All they had to do, even if they didn't show a photo of her, was stay silent. But to share that doctored photo and then to share that absolutely bizarre statement from William and Kate's Twitter account where she assumed responsibility for editing the photos, it's so bad. Every single step of the way, they have made the wrong decision. And it is just astounding to me that this institution, which has been racked by controversies related to racism and sexism and colonialism, the thing that could finally be the straw that breaks the camel's back with this royal family is a bad AI photo job. Like that's so embarrassing. And the last thing I'll say is that even if their bad PR strategy is a strategy in and of itself, I've seen some people make that argument that like they have such bad PR as a way to distract you because you get so obsessed with the bad PR that you're not even really talking anymore about the things taking place. Even if that's the case, that strategy is starting to fail, right? Like that strategy just like really doesn't hold up with our ability to have such an of the moment discourse with social media. So there's really no outcome with this where there isn't an existential crisis for the royal family with what's happening right now. This is all largely assuming that Kate is fine, which we don't know. So that's another point. Like this is all assuming that there isn't an explosion that happens at some point with whatever is happening with Kate. Like we might be slowly reaching a free Britney moment with Kate. And if that happens, then the royal family will have no one to blame but themselves. Prince William and Kate Middleton's PR is usually not that great. You guys just never notice it because they have the media in their back pocket, particularly the UK media. So, you know, my job is to report on the royals and to be, you know, sometimes part of their PR spin and be positive about them. Um and the absolute nightmare of this situation just kind of brings that into the forefront. And if you're not aware of what's going on, Kensington Palace released this photo in honor of Mother's Day in the UK. Uh, they said that Prince William took this image earlier last week. And then literally hours later, Three international photo agencies, including Reuters and the Associated Press, sent out a kill notice that they would not be sending out that image because the picture had been uh, manipulated. This is the kill notification that the AP sent out. I do not think this implies that there's anything um, malicious going on. While there's some outlander stuff going on online, I do think this was done to create a very curated image. They have been accused of photoshopping in the past and they, like the rest of us, probably retouched their images before sending them out. But why do I think they would do something this sloppy? I honestly think it starts at the top and I think it all starts with Prince William's controlling and his arrogance. We know that he can be petulant and demanding with his staff. We know that he does not take advice well and he's incredibly strong-willed. We know that he can be incredibly difficult to work with. And most importantly, he surrounds himself with yes men. Take all of that and add it to someone who is now deified in the media. Because the media needs a good guy and a bad guy, Harry and Meghan getting the brunt, basically all of the hate. William and Kate now can kind of do whatever they want and the media will always be on their side. They will always be in their back pocket. And now everything is 10 times worse. One of the worst things you can do in PR is double down. And that's all they've been doing. Literally, it would have been just so much easier to have her in the back of a car leaving the hospital just doing a little princess wave. How hard is that? It's not. I gotta be honest, I was not expecting to wake up to this news today. Kate Middleton has taken the fall. I mean, sorry, apologized for um, editing the photo that was sent out yesterday. And it just raises a whole host of questions. Like, are we supposed to believe that she personally is sending out this photo to global news agencies? That is something that your communication team typically does. And if you had surrounded yourself with people who are willing to say, hey, this isn't up to standard, you wouldn't have this problem. But like I said yesterday, they surround themselves with yes men, courtiers who won't stand up to them and say what they aren't willing to hear, which is that if you are being scrutinized on a global scale, Let's rethink and find something else to do. I have to be so honest, I hate that they had Kate putting out this statement and taking the fall essentially. Because could she have been the one to make those edits? Yeah. What I'm most upset about and is what I talk about a lot on my page is that they infantilize Kate. This is exactly, exactly that. I'm hoping that if they attribute the mistakes to Catherine that a lot of people are just going to be like, leave her alone guys. 
she's trying. And I don't mean to be intentionally cruel, but as someone who has worked on a comms team, who has worked in PR and marketing, the level of sloppiness is frustrating. It's something that could have been so easily avoidable. They are making it harder than it needs to be. And that is attracting more attention to it. The first photo of Princess Kate since her operation was released on Mother's Day. A photo of her and her kids taken by Prince William. Royalists were rejoicing, falling over themselves with joy. Almost as much as Prince William's falling over himself, trying to convince us plebs that everything's hunky-dory in the land of the Waleses. Others pointed out discrepancies in the image, and now it's been removed due to manipulation. What? The royals misleading the peasants? Surely not. It got a kill notification. Apparently this has never happened to a royal family photo before. So the photo that was released to quell speculation has just caused more of it. It's not going to help the royal family's popularity, which has dropped below 50% for the under 45s for the first time. It's such a shame. A lovely photo taken by Prince William has been taken down due to Princess Kate's terrible photoshopping skills. She must have gone absolutely mad with it because the palace are refusing to release the original. Family meeting. Okay, by now we've seen the videos and the clips and the coverage of Kate's Mother's Day picture and the inconsistencies that have been brought out. And today we get this admission that she somehow manipulated the photos as an amateur photographer, blah, 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 blah. The issue is not who took the photo, who edited the photo. That's not the issue. One of many issues, how did Kingsington Palace let this happen? That's one issue. But the main issue goes back to where is Kate and is she okay? Because again, we have not seen her since December. Because if we're going to be honest, there have been a lot of very interesting occurrences surrounding her time of being away from the limelight. Not to mention the inconsistent messaging because originally they said that she is unlikely to return to public duties until after Easter, which is March 31st. So on March 5th, we get this um, article saying that she will attend Trooping of the Color a day, the day on or the day after we saw her in the car with her mother. Only for the next day to have that scrub saying that she has not officially returned yet. Stripping of the color is June 6th, a month and two, nearly two months after Easter. So why would she not be able to attend? Or why is it questionable if she will be in attendance? Isn't that strange? At this point, the only thing that's going to squash any of this is if she is present at Commonwealth Day. And unfortunately, it's necessary at this point to show proof of life because truly we haven't seen her. And this institution does not have a great track record of treating women who married into the family well. If anything, they treat them as if they are disposable. I don't expect to see her here. But this, again, at this point, what we need is proof of life and that she's okay. Well, well, well. Where to begin? So I guess we're going to talk about the elephant in the room. Um, this is not great. I'm doing my very best, my very best not to laugh at this, but come on. And the palace declining to comment. Really? Someone's getting fired at the palace for this. Actually, several people. In fact, I'd get rid of everyone there. But of course, the UK papers gobbled it up. I knew it'd be on the front of the majority. So we had the scum here. Looking great, Kate. First official picture since op. But fans spot Photoshop gaff. Mmm. The Daily Mail. Excuse me. This joyous Mother's Day snap was meant to be the reassurance we all needed. But has it backfired? I'd say so. And we've got the Daily Telegraph just straight in there. Photo from Palace was doctored, say agencies. <coughs> Daily Express. Kate thanks the nation for its support with charming photo that proves she's on the mend. The Times, message from Kate for Mother's Day. Ah. The Guardian, respect. The Daily Mirror, recovering Kate's message to the nation as William takes happy stuff for Mother's Day. Thank you. No, thank you. The Independent, Kate thanks nation for supporters. First official picture since surgery released. You've already got Sarah Vine on it, and she's Kate's probably biggest cheerleader. Kate's on the mend. So what a pity this image is fueling yet more rumours. Mm -hmm. And the Daily Mail, of all papers, are already all over it with regards to all the photoshopping. And I'm sorry, but the kicker for me is the missing wedding rings, like, and the engagement ring, like, honestly. In a major twist, this is a really positive story, and the newspapers here are actually talking positively about Meghan and Harry. Wow! And I'll leave you with this for anyone wondering if Fox News is GB News. Yes, it is. Prince Edward is not Harry and Meghan, and that's a blessing.
He's all yours. <laughs> Hi, Camp Pass PR. This is Ashley. William. Hi. Hello. Oh, Kate's there in the background. Mm, sure. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah. I have been online. I haven't. Have you been online, William? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, so random. Such random conspiracy theories. Yeah. It is not at all backed up by context or the weird assortment of photos we've been feeding the public. Um, yeah, yeah, I just, I wondered if you'd give it any more thought to my, um, kernel of truth strategy. Yeah, just give people more of an idea what Kate is going through, because I don't even know, <laughs> right? So, so I think it would be good. Out of the question. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I love that. No, that, that will not arouse any suspicions at all, at all. Um, yeah, in that case, do you remember the memos that I sent last year? I sent several about me approving every photo before it goes out because I have seen some things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, what happened to that? Mm, impromptu. I love that. I love that. Yeah, um, <laughs> no, I love Photoshop. I love Photoshop too. Big fan, big fan. It's, it's a little bit different when I use it, I think, just because I'm not a member of the royal family. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I can see why that's confusing. Um, I, I would just love to be included <laughs> next time when these decisions are made. Yeah, it is, you know, the monarchy might end if we keep this up. So, so just, just something for you guys to keep in mind. I never want to do this again. Well, guess what? You're going to have to do it for the rest of your life. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, hit that notification bell.